Today you will learn my favorite workflows, shortcuts and tips and tricks while using Adobe Substance 3D Painter. The tips in this video will get gradually more difficult and more advanced. The chapter markers below will help you to navigate to each sequence so you can go back and forth and rewatch certain aspects if you miss some information. If you are new to my channel, I upload frequently VFX content mainly in the look dev, lighting and texturing fields. And if you want to see more content like this, I would highly appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel and make sure that notification bell is turned on. The first thing I do after importing my assets is heading over to the settings tab and making sure viewport scaling is set to none. This will give me sharper viewport representation. By confirming that you will see that your edges get a lot sharper already. Next up I'm heading over to my display settings and all the way at the top I'm making sure I'm loading in a calibrated HDRI. Then I'm making sure that my post effects are disabled, but I want to enable the anti-aliasing. This will give me really nice and crisp edges all around the surface of my objects. And for the anisotropic filtering, I most of the time head over to, um, to medium or high settings. In the shader settings, there's a few more things. I most of the time increase my AO intensity just to get a stronger contact shadows. And I increase my quality from low to high or very high. On top of that, I'm disabling subsurface scattering if I'm not needing that and also disabling parallax occlusion mapping. With the new ASM shaders, which is um, Adobe standard material, I added a few new things which I also disable because I am not needing code sheen or base surface. And then I also disable displacement if, because I'm not needing that unless I want to displace my shaders. You can follow along by heading over to file, open sample, and then opening up the meat mat SPP file. This will give you this um, substance painter object. Don't forget to comment below your favorite tip of this video. I always like to go to my layers and make sure that I have the same base material. So heading over to each texture set, make sure you delete the default paint layer. Then create a fill layer and adjust the base color to 0.18 and increase the roughness from 0.3 to 0.65. This is a generic gray rough surface you would see on film sets on reference gray spheres and default Macbeth charts. By holding shift and right click you can actually drag your environment light. This is very nice to quickly see different light angles on your object. Now rename the fill layer to your base. That's always what I do. And now what you want to do is we want to have the same material on all of my texture sets. A quick way of doing this is right clicking it and instantiating it across the texture sets. I use that shortcut quite often, Control Shift and D. So Control Shift and D will open up a dialog to, um, to allow me to copy it over to my instance children essentially. So it's automatically selecting everything except your source. So just hit OK. And then you will see then this material is assigned to everything below that layer. Now let's bake our mesh maps. Heading over to the texture set settings, hit the bake mesh maps button or control shift B. And then these are here my default settings. And I also have a, I also have a dedicated substance baking tutorial. So I will be rather quick with setting these. 4K for my output map. I always use a super sampling of four. For ID map, I always go to mesh ID polygroup and I use a random color, apply that to everything. I'm in occlusion, crank up the rays and reduce the, um, the occlusion distance, maybe to point, 0.25, apply that to everything. Curvature also gets all the rays and we are also applying this to everything. Position is the default. Thickness will also get all the rays, apply to everything. And then we head over to bake selected textures. After the baking is complete, you can hit B to cycle through your baked mesh maps. With Shift B, you go the opposite way. As you can see, all the maps are baked quite nicely and it's always good to bake out a high resolution map. Even though it may take a little bit longer to compute, you will get way more accurate um, smart material materials. When I am working with complicated and dense meshes in Substance Painter, I always like to be able to quickly jump between those texture sets. So you can either do this in the texture set list by clicking on those different texture sets, or you can use Control, Alt and right click 
and click on the mesh and you will see that the texture set is being selected automatically. I also like to work in the focus mode. So what I always do, I click this eye icon to just visualize the asset or texture set what I'm currently working on. And you can also make sure you select your instances and then you can always isolate your objects like that as well. You can see now this is isolated. I have created a hotkey for that, which is Control F. And you can change your custom hotkeys if you go to settings, shortcuts, and you look for hide, ignore, excluded geometry. I assigned this to Control F. The default is Alt H, I believe. So for me, it was more convenient to set it to Control and F. So now I can close my texture set list. I can quickly jump to the head texture set, hit Control F, and just work in this kind of geometry here. I want to show you the technique called quick masking. So first of all, let's create a paint layer. And obviously a paint layer is what it is. You can paint on it and do some funky things. You can project, you can use different kind of alpha masks, different kinds of presets and, and just brush on it, right? So with quick masking, what I can do, I can hit Y to enable that. And now I can use some any kind of brush and I can brush in black, for instance. This will say, do not do anything in this area, which is now painted black. If I now hit U, I'm back into painting mode. And if I now paint, you can see that I am not painting over the black area. And once I'm going out of the quick mask mode by hitting Y again, you will see that the black area will be isolated. And you can see this was now my quick mask drawing. It's pretty convenient if you quickly want to mask out, let's say an area or something. So you can hit Y and you can say, oh, I want to very quickly mask out the area around the eye like this. And then I want to go back into the painting mode and I want to paint some highlights, let's say some lashes or whatever on the top and bottom. And then you can see, oh, you did not touch that area. So that's super helpful. So that is a quick way to isolate areas of your mesh to not paint on top of them. So if I cycle through my mesh maps, you can see that I have this ID color slot. And if you have a more complex object, you will have different IDs per texture set. Right now, I just have one per texture set, but you can see it's uh, three distinct colors. So if you want to assign a material with different kind of ID maps, what you can do, you can drag your material over. And if you hold control, you will see that the IDs are displayed. And the cool thing, if you have diff different IDs per mesh, you can just drop them on that specific ID and it will create you the object with a mask automatically assigned. And you will see that the mask is set to color selection. And if you click on color selection, you can see that it is picking the colors from the mask ID. And obviously you can pick different colors and it will assign those colors as well. Obviously we are working in different texture sets, so this won't happen. But if you have an asset with different IDs per texture set, you can easily assign them like that. Now let's create a quick and complex material. I always like to see the mask I'm working on. So I'm always all clicking on the mask icon here at the top to visualize the current mask I'm working on. I also sometimes want to quickly toggle back to the material mode. So you can always hit M to go quickly back to the material mode or hit C to go back to the masking mode. So I'm using these two hotkeys all the time because I always want to see the results, but then I want to go back to the masking. And you cannot really click up here because this will always open up the or close the material section or it will open up the mask section. And I don't want that. I just want to stay in my masking section. I quickly toggle between mask and uh, material. You can group your hero layer after it was instantiated. So by just hitting Ctrl G, you create a folder around it. Because we instantiated this machinery sub layer across the texture sets, we can still do any kind of masking on top of that. So on top of here, I can still create a black mask. You can see that this now is not affecting the other texture sets, which is quite nice. And I can go in here, can go back to masking and I can just drop some kind of mask in the slot and you will see it only affects the top layer now. And that is because, as I said, we just instantiated this and this is not this the sub layer here does not have any masking. And if I hit 
Alt Control and right click to switch to my texture sets, you will see that these texture sets don't have any masking at all. So the beauty now is I can in this one, I can still create a black mask, which will disable it in here. And then I can paint um, or create a different kind of masking uh, on, on this kind of texture set. And you will see that something is, is different in this one. So obviously I can hit again, global invert and do all kinds of different things on my, on my other texture set to have a custom control on my instantiated layers. And again, now, because it's instantiated and it is um, inheriting from the parent, I can still apply a paint mask um, right in here, which will work quite nicely. If I hit Alt and click on here, you can see I can now quite easily paint, switching my input color. And you will see if I go back to M, my, um, my, my metal is poking through here. And if I want to change the masking on the top layer, I can Alt, Control, right click, go to the top layer which I then have control in my parent settings here. So if I go to this mask, I can again go in here and add a completely different paint layer. Let's say I want to add some white in here, just like that, going back to my paint layer, you will see that our paint is poking through again. Now let's say we want to add additional details to our geometry, but we do not want to go back to modeling and rebaking our mesh maps. So the trick is to use some kind of anchor point system. And what I always like to do, I want to go to the bottom of one of my materials. Let's say we're going to the machinery material and then I'm creating a paint layer which I like to always call it extra details, or if you go to your textures and you pick some kind of normal map, let's let's just pick this circle here, or let's say this handle ledge here. You will see if I paint that I am painting this kind of normal information onto the surface, but it's not really doing much. I don't get this same curvature effect or this rust and all these kind of effects, right? So first of all, let's just make the brush size larger by hitting control and right click to drag. That way I can place it a little bit more intuitively. So the trick is now to convert this extra details layer. Let's just make this red and let's right click this and say add anchor point. So this layer now will be converted to an anchor point with the name extra details. And you want to affect everything above this layer. So in this dirt layer here, if I go to the mask, se mask section, the mask editor has a tab which is called micro details and it has also texture slots for micro normals and micro height because we painted a normal map if you go to the extra details tab again you can see that we just painted the normal section here we don't actually need height just normals and of the mask editor you can go to micro normals and instead of picking some kind of texture you're picking an anchor point and the anchor point is named extra details because that is our name you can see a little bit changed here. Make sure that you reference the normal channel because that is where you painted your information onto. And then you have to go up a little bit to find the micro details tab and make sure micro normal is turned on. And see by just enabling that, we got definitely some kind of effect around the edge of this. So if I increase the curvature intensity or the height details, you will see that this effect changes a little bit. So let me repeat that process for all the other ones. I have uh, three more to do. So now you can see we have a very effective way to add more details to our object. And you can go into each of those mask editors and dive down to your micro tab, micro details tab, and play around with the radius of all these different kind of channels. And you can play around with the depth. And you can see that we are adding way more detail to this. So let's head over to the back of the head and maybe go back to our extra details layer. And maybe let's just use a different kind of stamp. Maybe this... Um, the circle here, let's just drop that in here. Maybe change the brush size a little bit smaller, control right click and drag. And you can now see we have this weird effect here on the back. And you can use all sorts of different materials or different textures, maybe let's try this one. And you can see we get all these nice additional details. And depending on the size, you get a different effect. And also if you go to our texture sets, we can change our overall quality to be 4K. That way we have higher details and more interesting effects. You can see the front looks also now a lot better, but essentially you can see that based on this workflow, we can paint way more interesting effects. All right, let's say you want to create a more dynamic effect. So first of all, let's create another layer on top of my machinery. So if I go to my smart materials and I just drop a charcoal material on top of this, which looks like that. So what I want to do now, I want to go back to my machinery layer, create a black mask, 
so we see the metal poking through and then in here i will create a paint layer and i will be switching over to my uh, mask view hitting c and then going over my particle brushes and find the burn particle brush if i know paint in here you will see that i get this kind of burn effect and i get these little flames going up and it's just essentially burning my material so what's happening now, if I go to my material view, you will see that my material is now being revealed. So in the mask area itself, I want to create a filter and I do want to inverse the effect. So I just have my metal being revealed. So let's say I want to have this affect my charcoal layer as well, which is right now pretty dark. So what I want to do in this invert, I want to on top of the invert, I want to create a anchor point. So this will create an anchor point for my top layers to inherit essentially. So if I make that mask visible, I create a black mask in here. And in that black mask section, I create a fill layer, which then in turn will reference my machinery mask. And now see what's happening. Everything is now charcoal around this burn effect. We are not quite there yet. So let's head over to C to the masking mode. And what I want to do now, I want to blur this effect, blur this layer, and then subtract it. To, so we just have a mask around the outside of this. So if I right click here and I create a new filter, and I go in here and create the blur effect and I blur it out like that and then duplicate the base layer again which is my referenced channel and I then just subtract the inverse of that you will see that we only get this outside mask if I view my layer now you will see that we kind of have this dark outline around this and this is kind of the effect I'm going for I just want to um, exaggerate that a little bit more by creating a levels on top of that if I go back into masking mode you can see now if I hit the auto button here you can see that I can control the mask a little bit better and I just want to have it very white in the close around our burn effect, something like that. If I go back to my material view, you will see that we now have this charcoal-y effect on the outside. And the cool thing now is I can go to my original paint layer and I just can go to a brush preset and I can just brush using uh, my Wacom tablet. And you will see that the longer I press or the harder I press, the quicker I will get this reveal effect. And it kind of looks like something is like burning or eating away from this material. And this is a more advanced usage of these anchor point systems because you can have very strong and very different effects based on how you apply these anchor points and what channels you target with them. All right, so now let's create a more complex blending and masking effect to reveal the layer below it. First of all, I always want to create a black mask to disable the layer. And then I'm always going over to create a generator. I typically use the default mask editor and then I switch over into the mask mode so I can see my mask itself. In a mask editor, let's increase the curvature to be fully on. And you can see now we see a nice strong curvature effect. So what I want to do now, I want to connect in a texture which helps me break out this pure white. So heading over to the new texture tab in the new Adobe substance 3d painter and let me just drop in a few materials here one in texture slot number one and then i'm just dropping something similar into the texture slot uh, two and then if you scroll up all the way to the texture slots you will see that texture one is disabled so let's increase that texture opacity go into the texture mode and change the blending mode from overlay to multiply that way you can see our texture is being applied and it's multiplied with the white areas in that map. And you can do a similar thing to the texture slot number two, just to break it up even more. So increase the opacity, make sure the mode is set to multiply. And then you can play around with the contrast. You can play around with triplanar or the scale itself. That way you get a nice breakup. And if I visualize our material now, you will see that we kind of get this orange poking through. Obviously our map is inverted, so you can hit over to global invert to flip it around and you can see now we get kind of some edge breakup um, where we have our curvature mask. It's not ideal yet, right? So uh, if we go back to C to see our uh, masking mode, you can again go into the contrast here. You can change the balance to have it a bit more stronger, but you will see that you will always get this very obvious curvature line. What I tend to do, I create a new filter. I'm looking for the warp effect. If I go back to my mask view, you can see something changed with the edge. It's kind of breaking up a little. In here, you have a few parameters to break up the edges. I tend to play around with the source tiling and also with the intensity. You can see if I bring it up, you get a really broken edge here. You can also create another filter and you can use the blur slope, which does a similar thing. 
and it creates these patterns as well. So you can play around with those blending modes to really break up all these parameters and all these smooth surfaces. And now it almost looks like a little bit of flaky paint chipping off. What I also like to do is add an additional fill layer with some kind of texture map applied. So if I go back to my mask mode, you will see that the fill layer is now just gray. And if I search for like some kind of scratch mask and I drop it into my fill layer, you will see that we get these scratches. We obviously have lots of control over these scratches. And now you can see though that our grunge scratches are on top of our original texture here. So what you can do is just go to either to sub subtract no mode or the difference mode which will help you to visualize those scratches and if I go back to my material now you will see that we have some kind of reveal of these scratch masks. Another thing which we are missing is some kind of dust effect on top of everything. So let's just create a new fill layer and just name it dust and just make sure that we don't create height and normal we just want uh, color roughness and metal change the color to something more saturate, uh, desaturated and dark, uh, something like that. And then increase the roughness so it's very dry looking. And now we just want to mask it off. So there are different ways of doing this. One is obviously with the mask editor, but I just want to show you another nice trick, easy trick to get this effect. So let's head over to our masking here at a black mask, so it's disabled. And then in here, we want to create a generator. And instead of using the mask editor, I want to use the world space normal map. So if I visualize the mask, you will see that's our world space normal. And the default is set up correctly. It's using the top and bottom. You can see top and bottom is enabled. So at the top here, you can change the, the contrast and the blur if you want to have it a little bit smoother. What you can see though, is that the, our world space normals are also affected in these lower regions where the normals are facing upwards. And we don't want that. We only want it on the top. So what you can do is just create another generator and change this mode from um, and change this generator to an amino occlusion generator. You can see now this is what that looks like. And in here you can also change um, the balance, have it more contrasty and all that. And you can see that all these inside areas are now essentially disabled. Problem now is it's on top of our world space normal. So all we've got to do is change the blending mode to multiply. That way we are ignoring the inside and we will only have the outside of our sphere. You can see this is without it, and that's when it's enabled. And if I now visualize our material, you will see that we have this nice dust effect settling on top. And again, you can go to the world space normals, play around with the balance to have it a little bit stronger. And you can see it's very cool. It's not really going inside these crevices. And obviously if you want that, you just um, not have this occlusion. You can see that the dust is collecting on the inside and all over the place. If you learned something today, make sure to leave a like and also subscribe to my channel. I would love to see you in my next video.